Bubbles are ubiquitous, and um, if we stand close to a waterfall, we hear this sound. This is due to the bubbles definitely forming, and uh, they ring like bells. If you're surfing on a wave, you hear a sound that is also caused by uh, bubbles rising and deforming. We also see bubbles um, in our daily life in the kitchen when we uh, boil water, say for example to cook an egg, and if we look at uh, the bubble rise in a, in a pot at a very high heat, we uh, see uh, bubbles of various sizes rising through water. The topic for the presentation today is not on, on bubble rise in liquids, but rather bubbles rising in fluidized beds of fine particles. And uh, one of the messages I'd like to put across is that the bubble rise in fluidized beds of particles has a remarkable analogies to bubble rise in liquids. Indeed, these analogies can be uh, exploited to develop a scale-up strategy as discussed in my paper published in Chemical Engineering Science in 1996. The most important industrial application of fluidized bed processing is in fluidized catalytic cracking of a vacuum gas oil to produce uh, gasoline or propylene as is nowadays also quite prevalent in the uh, petroleum industry. The uh, cracking reaction is uh, catalyzed by a zeolite uh, and the particle size is approximately uh, about 50 micrometers. The uh, cracking takes place in a uh, riser reactor that consists of a uh, long cylindrical vessel in which the contact time is less than about two seconds. We have um, co-current upflow of uh, oil vapor and catalyst in the riser reactor. The uh, products are withdrawn at the top and the uh, coked catalyst is regenerated in a bubbling bed and um, in which uh, air is bubbled through uh, the uh, spent uh, of the coke catalyst to burn off the coke to and the um, regenerated catalyst is uh, recycled back to the reactor. So, uh, bubble rise in uh, the uh, regenerator is of importance and the uh, contacting is in a uh, regime that is uh, called either a churn turbulent regime or just a turbulent bed uh, contacting regime. Let's uh, look at that regime in uh, somewhat more detail. The uh, various uh, regimes of gas solid fluidization are sketched in the upper part of this uh, slide. We have a fixed bed of particle, say uh, made up of uh, fine powders, and uh, Air is, uh, or vapor, is uh, 
passed through the bed. At very low velocities, the, uh, the bed is stationary. And uh, at a certain velocity with uh, fine powders, we have a regime called homogeneous fluidization. This is quite unstable and uh, difficult to realize in practice. And um, if the uh, superficial gas velocity in the bed is uh, larger than about one centimeters per second with fine uh, countless particles, we uh, enter the regime of heterogeneous or churn turbulent fluidization. If the bed vessel is very narrow, this uh, regime results also in slug flow. At, as the gas velocities increase further, we have turbulent fluidization. The uh, fluidized bed uh, regenerator in the uh, FCC process operates uh, in um, a regime that is either this one or this one. More currently, this is the preferred regime of contacting. Further increase in glass velo uh, gas velocity results in uh, dilute phase riser transport. That is the regime that is uh, prevalent in the uh, FCC reactor. For a gas liquid system, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence in the, uh, in the various flow regimes. We have, uh, for example, when no gas is uh, sparse through the column, we have a stagnant uh, bed of liquid. And um, at very low gas velocities, we have homogeneous bubbly flow. The gas velocity increased further. We have uh, the heterogeneous flow regime or the churn turbulent flow regime. In narrow diameter vessels, we have a uh, slug flow. We have uh, turbulent bed contacting. And at very high uh, gas velocities, we have spray flow that is equivalent in hydrodynamic terms with dilute phase transport. The uh, analogies in the various flow regimes are often of a quantitative nature and uh, the analogous behavior can be exploited to develop a scale-up strategy that relies on cross-fertilization of uh, data on uh, bubble sizes, rise velocities, interface mass transfer, mixing, scale effects, etc. These are discussed in my papers that are listed here below. FCC Catalyst is uh, what is called a Geldart A type powder in the uh, Geldart classification shown here in which the particle diameter is on the x-axis and the uh, particle density rho p minus rho g is plotted on the y-axis. FCC catalyst that is typically uh, about uh, 50 micrometers in size is uh, aeratable and easily fluidizable. And there is a regime of homogeneous fluidization before bubbles appear. Particle uh, category B is sand-like. Particle uh, D uh, is spoutable. For example, coffee beans. They're not. This is not so important for uh, reactor applications. For FCC, we are firmly in this regime. And just to give you a flavor of uh, bubbling phenomena in a bed of uh, porous silica that is uh, akin to a uh, FCC uh, catalyst operating at a velocity of 3.3 centimeters per second. We see bubbles rising and there's some degree of back mixing in the in the uh, solid phase. If we zoom in, we can have a better look at the bubbles rising through the uh, 
bed of fine powder that is 38 micrometers in diameter. The uh, bubble rise in uh, fluidized beds consisting of fine uh, powders such as uh, FCC catalyst or silica shown here has uh, remarkable similarities with bubbles in a uh, fluid uh, in a uh, gas liquid system. So let's have uh, first a look at uh, bubbles rising in a liquid of water and under similar conditions let's consider bubble rise in uh, a bed consisting of FCC particles. This is powder and I switch to liquid the video I switch to powders again. I switch to liquid just to demonstrate that uh, the flow regimes appear at least qualitatively to the eye to be uh, analogous. Cohesive powders such as flour and starch are difficult to fluidize and uh, this uh, raises the question how do I demonstrate this in, uh, in an experiment? So what I do here in this uh, video I'm going to show now is to uh, take a wheat flour and I show I uh, bubble or sparge gas through the bed packed with wheat flour but it does not fluidize nothing happens so in order to get it uh, fluidize I subject the uh, bed to vibrations and uh, what you will see in the video is a bed subject to uh, sinusoidal vibrations and uh, for the first half of uh, the video, the vibrations are effective and then I stop the vibrations and uh, then you will have an idea what happens to a uh, Geldart C powder and how poorly it fluidizes. So let's uh, start the video of a bed that is vibrated in which gas is injected at the bottom. The vibrations are clear. So it is possible to, uh, but no, no bubbles are seen, but there are channels that uh, rise in um, um, through the bed. So there are aerated areas and non-aerated areas. The vibrations still continue. And at this point the vibrations have stopped and uh, this is what would happen if there is some channel already present in the bed. If there is a channel that is already present in the bed the uh, gas will seek that pass. Whereas if the I had started with a stagnant bed, I would not even be able to uh, create this uh, channel for gas to pass through. So the, the moral here is we need to vibrate the bed in order to uh, allow gas through it. Indeed in um, silos containing particles if we uh, open the uh, valve at the bottom of the silo, nothing flows through unless you, the, you vibrate the silo a little bit and that allows the, uh, the particles to flow downwards. So um, at least now we have a 
good appreciation of uh, fluidization of uh, C type powders and A type powders as in the uh, foregoing um, slides. Eventually, this bed is going to clog up and now no gas will uh, pass through. But we won't wait that long. I stopped this presentation.